Hello everyone, my name is Feeble, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how you guys can make a pair of very smooth Minecraft legs, like this. So in this tutorial I'm going to be making something along the lines of this. Uh, these are two extremely smooth uh, legs with ankles. So yeah, it's pretty simple to make, and I don't know, it requires about 5-10 to 10 minutes of learning. So yeah, I'm going to get into the tutorial right now. So to start off, you're going to want to need a couple of things. Uh, you're going to want to have a joint bone. You can just go up to character, and then it'll be right here. Uh, you're also going to need quantizing. So if you press Shift and F12, you should get this little screen right here, where you go to Window, Customization, and C Customize Commands. You should get this little thing right here. And you want to type in Q-U-A-N, and you're going to see a bunch of this stuff. Uh, I have Enable Quantizing, Move Slider, Rotate Slider, and Scale Slider right here. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm only going to need Move Slider and Rotate Slider, and of course, Enable Quantizing. So, to start off the tutorial, you're going to want to need to make a box, which you can find right here. Or you just click and then, like that. So, to make the box, we're going to, or to make the leg, we're going to need to specifically set uh, each size. So, you're going to find the size over here, you just need to click on the box, or the cube, and then go to Object, and then you'll see all the object properties right here. So what you're going to want to need to do is you're going to want to change the size X to 25, the size Y to 75, and the size Z to 25. So it should be 25, 75, 25. And as you can see, it comes out as a perfect leg. What you're now going to want to do is set the segments. So for 25, you're going to want to set it for 4. So segment X should be 4, segment Y should be 12, and segment Z should be 4. So once you have that set, you can just press this little icon right here, or for you it may be right here, or you can just press C on your keyboard. So once that's done, uh, you want to enable your quantizing, and you want to set your move step to 3.125, or you can set it to 6.25 if you prefer that. And then you want to drag it up 37.5, and that should level you out with the ground. Now what you want to do is you want to uh, press this little icon up here, or if you have a side button on your mouse, and just press that, and or yeah. Uh, so you just want to click here, and then you want to zoom in to this little angle right here. So you want to press on your joint button, or go up to your character, and then go to your joint. And what we're going to do with this first joint is we're going to drag it up on the y-axis all the way up to 75. So it should be the very tip of the leg. Now what you want to do is you want to hold control or command if you're on a Mac and drag it down while holding it and then let go of both of your your mouse and your control or your command button at the very same time at about 37.5 so that'll be very so it should be at the very center of the leg then you want to do the exact same thing but go all the way to the bottom of the leg or you can just press the join button again if you prefer that. So now what you want to do is you want to make the bones um, connecting. So we're going to take uh, join point one and drag that underneath and make it a child of joint and do the same but for uh, joint, point, <laughs> joint point two. So it should look like this in the end. Now to help us with this you want to rename it so I'm going to call this leg top one, knee for the middle one, and then foot for the bottom one. I'm also going to rename the cube to leg, just for, actually I'm going to rename it to leg, I'm going to rename the cube to leg, leg, can't type, leg mesh, so that helps us out a lot, so I don't get confused with the bone. So now what you want to do is, what I like, well, what I like to do, this, you can, this is optional, is select all the bones and then go to this and it changes to line. You don't have to do this, but I just like it like this because it's a lot cleaner. Now what you want to do is you want to click on the mesh, and you want to click on this little, I don't know, like, like this L with the like arrows, or you can just press L on your keyboard, and you want to go back into this mode, um, and what you want to do is you want to drag your mouse all the way up to the tip, and it shouldn't move the leg at all, it should just move where you know it selects. And then you just want to press it again, make sure you deselect the L, or press L again once you're done with that, because if you don't, it's going to do some weird things. And I wouldn't, I don't know, I don't want to go that far. <laughs> so yeah, so now it should move up at the tip right here instead of in the middle. So now what we want to do is we're going to add the espresso. So you want to right click on the leg mesh, right click again, 
or you want to left click on the leg mesh and cl right click and go to Cinema 4D Tags and go all the way to the bottom to Expresso, and then you're gonna get this. I have mine set, but if you haven't like set yours in a specific place, it should just come up, up as a window. You don't have to set it like mine, but you can. Uh, so now what we want to do is we want to drag in the leg bone, and then I'm gonna resize it, and we want to click on the red, and we want to go to Global Matrix, so it should look like this. Then we're going to drag in the leg mesh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to click on the blue, and then go to global matrix and connect the two. This enables us so that we can move the leg joint, and then it binds with the leg bone, or with the leg mesh. So now what you want to do, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the view mode, and we're going to click on the leg mesh, hold shift, and you want to click and hold on this bend or you can just click it if you prefer that so it should come up like this um, now you're going to see 25, 75, 25 what you're going to want to do is you want to change the 75 to 25 and then that should make it so that it's like a box in the middle so now what you want to do is you want to click on keep y axis length and that should be checked so then what you want to do now is you want to change the angle to 90 degrees. That enables us so that we can bend it specifically like this. But as you can see, it's bending the top and not the bottom. So what we have to do is we want to turn this on the B axis or the blue axis 180 degrees, which so should be completely upside down. Now when we bend it, it will bend like this and not the other way around. Then you want to go back into your Espresso and you want to drag in the knee bone. For the knee bone, that we're going to go to coordinates, rotation, and then we're going to go to rotation P. Not global rotation. If you use global rotation, it's going to mess up a lot of stuff. So now you want to right click, new node, Espresso, calculate, range mapper. Range mappers can be confusing at first, but you get, to, you get used to them after you use them for a while. So, what you want to do is you want to go to the input range and change that to degree just by scrolling down or clicking. Then for the output range, you want to go to percent. So, now you get a few numbers down here. This is kind of the confusing part. So, what you want to do is you want to change the 360 to 90. And then you want to go down to you want to go down to the output upper and change that to 160. And then you want to connect the input to the rotation P. And then you want to drag in the bend. And you want to out connect the output. And just go up to the blue. Object properties. Strength. What this does is now when we move the knee, it bends the it bends the, um, the deformer so that we can actually get that smooth bend. Now, just to clean this up a little bit, I'm going to hide this by clicking this this dot right here. Or you just go into basic and then turn this to off. You can do either or. So now uh, we don't have a controller, so we can't like move it. And it's not IK. I'm not going to go over what IK and FK is. Um, there's tons of videos on YouTube of what they mean and like the difference in them. So we're going to set the IK so that it's all automatic and it's easier to use. So for this, this is a, you need to pay very close attention to what I do because this could you can mess up on this part really easily and I did when I was watching a video on how to do this for my very first time so I also forgot to mention so you want to press shift and F12 um, you're going to want to type in f freeze and you're going to find freeze transformation and just drag that somewhere like up here or something I don't know I have mine right here so you want to select everything and then just press that so that it sets all the um, coordinates to zero so, yeah. Another helpful thing is you can add PSR, but it's not needed. Because there's a, I don't know, it's just an easier way of doing that. So, we're going to want to set the IK. So, you want to click on the knee, press L on your keyboard, or click this little thing right here. Go to your Z. Um, this thing should be like right here or something if you're using your default, but I set mine over here. You want to go to your Z position. Like... Select it all, and then press negative, and then go to type in 
negative 0 0.1, press enter, make sure you press enter, and then press apply. And so what that does is it moves it very slightly. I don't know why it, you have to do this, but it, it's really necessary. So what you want to do now is you want to go to your leg, left click it, right click it, again, and then you want to go to character tags. Not Cinema 4D tags, character tags, and then you want to go to IK. So what you want to do now is there's all this stuff right here. If you lose it or something, you just click right there, and it's really easy. Take it back. So what you want to do now is you see, you're going to see the end goal, or the end, yeah, I guess, link. So you want to drag in foot, not knee, foot. And then you can see that there's goal. That's where we're going to make a goal. Um, I also forgot to unselect that thing, but it's whatever. So we're going to make a goal. Um... You can use splines, you can use really anything. I'm going to be using splines for this. Um, just because they're really easy to use. And, I don't know. So yeah. This is just going to be a normal spline. I'm going to actually make it yellow. Or, not yellow. <laughs> white. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to drag and circle to the goal. So now, if we've done this correctly, when we move this, it should move all together. And as you can see, it moves all together. But, personally to me, I don't really like the, uh, how there's no, like, ankle or anything, so we're going to fix that. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. You can actually add a bone for an ankle. Personally, I don't know how to do that, so I prefer to use deformers. Just because, I don't know, they're, they're simple and easy to use. So, we're going to freeze the transformation again. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to do the exact same thing. Uh, we're going to... Add in a deformer. We're gonna change this to 25. Basically the same thing. Uh, you don't have to change this one to 90. Uh, but what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna flip it upside down. Make sure your quantizing is on. Uh, then you wanna flip it upside down, and then you want to drag this, not all the way to the bottom, but 21.875. Just right there, so there's a little bit of gap space in between there. And then you want to hold control and go over here and drag up a little bit. And then make sure there's a second one. And then you want to change this one to 90, the angle to 90. So now it should be like this, but as you can see, when we move it, it's not going to move. So what we have to do is we have to actually create a null. Now to do that, we... All we have to do is we have to click and hold on the box or the cube, and you want, you're going to see null, or you can go to, to create an object and then null right there. It's pretty simple. So you're going to get this little null right here. Uh, I personally just name it as one, and then you want to drag it underneath the foot bone. Now once that's done, you want to hold control and drag that underneath your controller or whatever your controller is, and just name that like... 1.1 1 .1 or some some shit like that. So once you're done with that, uh, you're going to want to go back into your Expresso. You're going to drag in your 1, which should be a child of your foot bone. And we're just going to resize this a little bit. And we're going to set a global matrix. You're going to drag in your 1.1, your, uh, 1 .1, which should be a child of your goal or your controller. And you want to make you want to link the two global matrix to it. Now you're not completely done with this. What you're going to want to do is you want to make this a little bit bigger, and you're going to want to go to coordinates, rotation, not global rotation, rotation P, and rotation V. Again, you're not completely done with this. Uh, you want to right-click new node, and you want to add a range mapper. So calculate a range mapper. It's just going to be like that. Now we're going to do basically the same thing degree percent like this now this one's a little bit different what you're going to want to do is you want to set the input lower to negative 55 uh this can work with 55 50 and 60 it just i, I prefer 55 because it's more cleaner actually i'm going to go with 60 for this one but you can use any of those three that i mentioned so now what we want to do is we're going to set this one to regular 60, not negative. The input upper. And then for the output lower, what you're going to want to do is put 100. And for the output upper, 
negative 100. So this is what it should look like in the end. Now you want to copy that by holding Control or Command and dragging it down. And then you just want to connect the P and the B. Now for your whatever one you set for 90, that's going to be your P. So you want to just put it right there, and then whatever one is set for zero for the angle, that's your B. So then basically just set it up to the strength. And there you go. Now your fancy feet should be completed. I'm going to turn that off. So we can check, and as you can see, it's not like completely clean, but you can change just the, the numbers around and everything, so it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, so you got your fancy feet now. So to make this a lot like smoother, we're going to click on it. And you want to hold Alt and click on this. So it should show up like this if you did everything correctly. Now you want to click on your leg mesh, not your subdivision surface, your leg mesh, or your if you're using a um, an older version of Cinema 4D, it should be called a Hyper Nerve, um, if I believe. But you want to click on your leg mesh or your cube or whatever you named it, and you want to go to lines, I think it's called, or edges, edge mode. So it should look like this, and you can only select the edges. Now what you want to do is you want to press U and then L on your keyboard, or I think you can go to Tools, and then, I don't know, somewhere in here, I don't really know. But what you want to do is you want to select all the edges, so like this, while holding Shift, let's say, hold Shift and then just click them all, and then you want to press M and then R. And you should, and this thing should come over here. And then you want to change 100% to 80%. Right here, not right here, just right here. And then you want to press set. And as you can see, it makes it look a little bit smooth on the edges, but also kind of sharp at the same time. Got it. Got it. That was. Okay, so now when you're when you're done, it should look something like this. So it's very smooth. It's got ankles and yeah. So now what you can do is you can just close all this up. You can you can move this over like 12.5, I think. Yeah, and then Control C, Control V, and then there you go. Okay, there's actually one quick thing I forgot to add. Um, so you want to open everything back up. And you want to go back to your IK. Um, you, you actually, I can, I'm going to show you guys one more thing that's really important while doing this. And one thing you, you can add. So, which, so you might have noticed, like, by now, that when you, when you go to rotate it, it doesn't rotate. That's because there's no pole. And you need to add a pole. Um... Now we're just we're gonna assume that this is the right leg for the character, and what we're going to need to do is we're gonna add a pole, which is gonna be right here. So you're gonna it's gonna show up in your I don't know what to call this like your your items box I guess I don't know what it's really called I don't know its official name. So it should be like right in the center. But what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to make sure that you have 3.125 as your thingamajigger. Uh, make sure it's at 3.125. Drag it down to ground level, or 37.5 down. And then, if this is the right foot, or the right leg, you're going to want to drag it left. If this is the left leg, you want to drag it this way. So, this is going to be the right leg, so we're going to drag it out 50. Make sure it's 50, even if it's like this way. Make sure it's like 50. But, yeah. So, you can now see that it's doing some weird stuff. It's, it's sideways and it's bending around it. So what we want to do now is, what we're going to do is we're going to set the twist to 90, I think. If I, if I remember right, then it's 90. Okay, it's not. If it shows up as backwards, then it's negative 90. But for the left side, it's always going to be negative 90. But as you can see right now, it's bending, or it's like coming towards this way. 
So what you want to do is you want to take the leg.pole and drag it into here, underneath your controller. So now when you move your controller, you can now rotate it and that's all cool. So I just realized that some of you guys may want to add a skin onto this, so I will show you guys how to actually do that. It's not that hard to do. Um, so yeah, but first thing first, I want to show you guys how to add a squash and stretch, um, or stretch. So many of you guys might be like doing this and you can't figure out how to add a stretch. Um, this took me kind of a while to figure out, so don't worry, I'm going to show you guys. So you want to click on this, go into your squash and stretch, which should be kind of like, like this, and just click it. And then you want to go to the second stretch. Or, well, that, that's squash. So you want to go to the stretch and then just drag it all the way to 100. And then change the type to volume scale. And then you want to check the clamp. Now, for regular FMR, I believe it's like 21 point something. So, I recommend just doing like 22. So now you can see that it stretches and all that good stuff. Alright, so now to adding a skin. Um, you might have a material box down here, but I don't. Uh, I actually have a thing right here, which you can use, I'm just going to material manager, yeah, so you can just drag it there, up here somewhere, so yeah, I click that, and we're going to need to make a material, so what we're going to do is we're going to double click on this box or create a new material, um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to right click or double click on it, and we're going to open this up, so this kind of like, you know, everything, um, I don't personally like reflectance on my skins, so I'm going to check that off, or uncheck it. Now, to adding a skin, what we're going to need to do is you're going to go to color, and you're going to see texture right here. You're going to want to click these three little dots. There's a bunch of skins that I have. Um, I'm going to go with an easy skin. Let's just go with this one. Um, so you might get this little thing right here, just click no. Make sure you click no, and... As you can see, it's it's blurry. So the way to fix that is you want to go to sampling, and then you want to change this to non. Make sure it's not MIP or anything. Make sure it's non. So then you can see it looks very very clean and all that good stuff. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna drag this onto here. But you can see it doesn't fit perfectly. Now we're gonna turn off the subdivision by clicking this little check mark, and we're gonna click on the mesh. We're going to go to um, polygonal selection mode, press control and then A or command A, or just like, you know, just do this. But, yeah, so now to UV map it, uh, I'm actually going to turn this off. So, to UV map it, you want to go uh, to your layout, and then you want to go to BP UV edit. Now, this, th this, can, this can be confusing. Um, so just bear with me. Alright, so first of all, we're going to want to set snapping. Or no, 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 first things first. You want to go to, you're going to see the, your objects, materials, and colors. Go to your materials, and then check this, and then, and then go back to your objects. And then you, what you want to do is you want to drag in your material onto here. So then you, you should get these little lines you can paint over and stuff, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah. So, first, so now we want to set snapping. So the way to do that is, well, we don't want to use this type of scale. We're gonna hold, or we're gonna left click and hold. During this part where I'm trying to figure out how to snap, um, I kind of since I haven't done this in quite a while, I'm trying to remember how I did it. So just bear with me. I do figure it out in like I don't know what time it is, but. I, I do eventually figure it out, so just I don't know, just follow my steps, I guess. But yeah, I just want to let you know if that, that that's why there's, it took so long. It's because I kind of had to figure it out. So yeah, until we get to non-uniform scale. Now you want to go back to this little thing right here, and okay, you want to go to non-uniform scale and just. Let go and yeah, you know, get this stuff. Now, now, now you want to go to this where it's like a checkered pattern and then a 
yellow dot or yellow box. Or right, okay, so this is where I do figure out the snapping. You need to click on the UV polygons, uh, the mode UV polygons. That's exactly what you have to do. I'm sorry that I couldn't figure it out. I'm just too lazy to cut the clips. So yeah, sorry for my retardedness. UV polygons. So this is where we're gonna do everything. So you want to go to snapping, or just if you don't see it, then you just want to click on something and then go to snapping. Now you want to check move, scale, and rotate. Um, I don't think we're gonna be needing rotate for this, but it's always good to have it if you're doing the head or something. So for move, what you want to do is you want to set this to 3.125, scale to 3.125. Now we're gonna go into this little thing right here, and we're going using the uniform scale. We're gonna go to the top left corner, and we're gonna hold. And we're going to click and drag until we get, I don't know, something perfect like. So yeah, this, as you can see, like the pixels are very accurate. So that means it's, since the pixels, so you can see that the pixels are very accurate. That means that we did it like nearly perfect, or not even nearly, it's like it should be perfect. So now you want to press E, or just click on this. And you want to drag this down, and you can see that it fits perfectly. So to so to figure this out, um, we want to be looking at the front. So we're going to drag this over until it shows the front. But you can see it shows up on all sides. So we're going to look at this little left-hand corner down here, in the bottom left-hand corner, and you want the Z to be to be facing backwards and the X to be facing right, and then. Obviously, the Y should always be pointing up if you're doing that, then that's clearly wrong. So yeah, the, the Z should be pointing backwards. If you're doing it, if you look at this like this, this should be the front. So what you want to do now is you want to press spacebar, and you what you want to do is you want to hold control or command, and you want to just, while holding it, you want to just very carefully deselect this these pixels. And you want to do that for each side. So we're going to go to the this should this should be the the left side right here, or the right side for the character. So yeah, now I just want to do that for each side. I'm gonna speed it up. Okay, so now once that's done, we want to select the top. So you can't just go up here and then select that because, as you can see, it's not accurate. So we're gonna want to reform or redo this or. You want to re resize this, so you just want to go back up to the left, top left hand corner of this, and carefully scale it down. Now you're gonna run into a little glitch right here, where it's not gonna be perfect for each pixel. So just let go and then try again. So as you can see, it's not perfectly accurate, and as you can see, it kind of slips through a little bit. Which, it kind of does annoy me, so what we're going to do is you want to go to the scale, and right by the 5, you want to put a forward slash, and then 2. So now, we should we should try that, so I can, as you can see, it doesn't work. So we're going to try that again, and it's not perfect, once again, so, actually... So we're going to try this one more time in it. Okay. Alright, well it should be perfect. I don't know if you're going to get that any more perfect. But yeah, so now, just deselect it. It's not completely perfect, but... Yeah, we're going to have to do it. That's how we're going to have to do it. So now you have the... Now the leg is fully... I'm going to go back into your startup user and then... Or your startup. So now the leg is perfectly UV mapped, and yeah, it's all working. It's it looks phenomenal. It's very clean. Um, oh yeah, you can turn back. You can turn the subdivisions on again, and it looks quite clean to be honest. Like I, I'm really, I don't know, I'm kind of fanboying over this, like how clean it looks. So if you do want to, I'm just gonna show you guys how you can add the second leg. So 
you want to hold, you, I'm just going to move this over actually, so we can add in another leg. Okay, so now, now what we're going to do, since this is an exact copy of this leg, what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the subdivisions and we're going to click on the leg mesh. Go back into UP, BP, UV edit, and you want to go into polygonal selection mode, control A, and it's going to select all of this, just press E, or no, you want to go into this, I'm very sorry, just take this and drag it over to this, or down here if it's a 1.8 skin, just drag it over here, and then just, just press spacebar and then just click over here, and then you're basically good to go, so now it's not an exact copy of this leg. So yeah, now they're completely different legs, and they work just perfectly. Um, but one thing before I do in this video, um, since this is the left leg, you want to change a couple of things. So for example, um, your pole, you're going to want to obviously change your pole. So it should be 100 over. So if you move it over. And you can see that it's going to go backwards. Um, what you want to do is you just want to click on this again, and then change this to regular 90. And as you can see, it, it's now perfect. So, yeah. Uh, hopefully you guys did enjoy. Um, let me know if you guys want more, like, if you want more tutorials on how to build a rig. Um, I will try to make a part two on arms or the body or something. I don't, I don't know. But let me know if you guys want any more, I don't know. <laughs> Let me know if you want any more tutorials, and I will try to get them to you guys. Uh, so, yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Peace out.